All right. If we are now freed from the uh, the bits, we can begin the takes. Oh man, it's time for the takes. So I think, long story short, I spent like almost 150 hours playing this game for the first time. Not even talking about like infinite post game content or replays. I just spent 150 hours in the game. Shoutouts to the voice cast; they're all incredible. Like even my complaints about some of the voices, like they're all unbelievable. This was such a well-acted game. And aside, I think I, I do have some technical complaints on the voice acting part, especially with people like Sojiro, who had like really weirdly, um, some weird issues with their, with their voice bits, with their voice, the voice to bits with like mixing and, uh, editing issues, but otherwise incredible acting. Um, long story short, I'm unbelievably stunned that this game held my attention for this long. I was fully expecting to go into this and like have it kind of not, have it kind of pan out, uh, you know, a few streams in and go, well, we'll see how it goes and then back off on it and play by myself or something or play it on YouTube. Um, and we played 150 hours on stream. Uh, and that's, that's wild. Johnny Young Bosch is in this? Andrew Lowenthal? Wait, what? Um, it, it just, um, how did I miss them? <laughs> uh, these games are, uh, not these games, but this game, um, did a f phenomenal job with writing. I have never seen a game that lasted this long sustain itself so strongly on writing, ever. Um, and I haven't, I, guess I haven't played the many games that are this long, but... I mean, even, even like, games like Final Fantasy VII, which we played fairly recently, which was, you know, lengthy in the 40-hour range, right? Um, had a lot of points where I think the writing went weird places and kind of dropped the, the ball a little bit on the narrative. And because of the way the confidence system is structured, then with this really compelling narrative development in the midst of a very compelling single main plot. The game and beyond the plot, which is what we're here for, is a plot and characters. We'll talk about that. Talk about the character complaint in a second. Um, we end up with a game that is ridiculously fun to play. Is is it the single deepest RPG mechanics we've ever seen in the history? No, of course not. Um, but extremely, extremely fun at its core. You know, kind of like Pokemon. It's a very simple system of rock paper scissors. You have a weakness and you have a strength. And you match the, the the weaknesses with stuff that you have that has that is strong against those things, and you push the button, and then cool things happen, and that's great. One thing across the board related to that is systems like the personas themselves, Persona Fusion in particular, are very overwhelming. It, there is so much to get to wrap your head around, and I personally think it's a great way to get players invested. Um, but because cer certainly see others bouncing off, which is just how much there is to get your arms around, especially with fusions being really, really overwhelming with the possibilities you have access to. But at the end of the day, it's an incredible system. I think the fusion system is one of the best RPG party management mechanics I've ever seen. It's unbelievably elegant and just an absolute blast. So we, we ended up making that full roster of endgame personas just for the heck of it, because I felt like doing it. Like We didn't need it. We could have made it off of way weaker personas, but it was just so much fun to build super, super high-end personas and, you know, get the the traits matched up and everything like that, but I had a blast with that, so that was super fun. On the writing side, overall, I'm very impressed. I think, as we talked about in the beginning of Royal, some of the, some of the games, the game has, has a bit of a problem, as most games do, with bringing up themes that they can't fully get their arms around with, in terms of the, with, with just time and pacing and it being a game. It's hard to like really chew into narrative concepts when you have to also have a game involved. So, especially when the game like this is not directly related to the plot, like, you know, some smaller indie games can afford to have the narrative and the gameplay really mesh super, super tightly because it's a really controlled couple hour long experience. For a massive, sprawling, over 100 hour RPG like this, you can't build the gameplay systems to match the narrative. So it's hard to make that work the same way. That said, I think the narrative was quite strong. A lot of the core themes were incredibly compelling. And throughout the whole thing, it was just... Production IG! You know what? Jeez. Um, was just uh, a heck of an experience. Cut out a full palace before she is in base because it was too long. Wow. Uh, I love the palace system. Really, really clever. Speaking of how compelling themes and, and marrying gameplay to narrative. 
genius, genius concept. Palaces were phenomenal. Um, my main complaint I want to talk about, because uh, everything, everything is mostly just me, I could just gush for half an hour about this game, it's unbelievable. Um, my main complaint is that, and it came up a few times throughout the playthrough, with the writing. And this is something that, is, as, as anybody who's been with, with us for a while knows, I've had complaints with in the past, especially with something something like, in particular, Octopath Traveler. Um, I think Persona did a great job, and, and some of the best I've ever seen with RPG writing with regards to group scenes being really well managed really well shot in terms of how they are portrayed on screen and well balanced in terms of dialogue that said i think there was a little bit of a missed opportunity with regards to characters interacting on their own and i think this is in part part and parcel the deal with having a game that's dating sim adjacent with having joker the main character as a player avatar everything revolves around joker and we ended up with like these little shreds. We have like a little shred of a um, on a Makoto friendship right after we recruited Makoto, stuff like that. And I think even getting a little bit more ability to dig into that, much like Fire Emblem does with, with its supports, would have gone a really, really, really long way um, to developing the cast. Because my no, my major complaint is, and this is true of any game that's structured this, including Three Houses, including and other Fire Emblem games. Uh, is that the characters end game very much boiled down to their single arc. And that's, well, understandable due to the structure. Something that I think would be cool to see more branching if there's the ability to do that. Like the, like the crossover scenes where you have like the, the weekend episodes where you're going somewhere with a confidant and meet up with the, sec with the second confidant who doesn't, they don't, who they don't talk too much, was one of my favorite parts of the game. In terms of, in terms of just like small moments. Those were all phenomenal and I would have loved to see more of those. Octopath was a downgrade from barely a second. Yeah, I mean, I think Octopath was just frustrating because they promised this and began sort of this point of like these intersecting storylines that then didn't intersect. And here they intersected. We had all these great group scenes. So I think that my major complaint there isn't here. That's why obviously I love this unreservedly versus Octopath where I was super frustrated. But I think there's still a missed opportunity there. Um, we're going to get a post credits thing now because we, we got the uh, true ending requirement of Hild. And then we'll continue talking about Persona 5. Oh. What? What? Hmm? That was weird. That felt very like Marvel post credits, like, yeah, here, then now for the next thing. Um, if you load your clear data, you'll be able to inherit some of your progress on a new playthrough. Please be careful, as you would not have to be able to resume where you left off if you write data. Okay. Yes, let's hear your clear data, for sure. A lot of these you will no longer need. Um, which ones do we not need the most? We don't need this one, probably, 127. What was five hours? Um, man, there's a lot of parts I would, I would consider going back to for certain things. Uh, we probably need 1218. Okay. Number one, too. It's fitting. Okay. So are we done now? Jeez, all right, we're done, folks. Okay, how about that? It's over. Folks, let us continue the takes, because we have more takes to do still. And then we have the uh, request for takes from chat afterwards. Um, what do we want to do while we're waiting? Thieves done? We can walk around the thieves now while we're talking about stuff. Um, so I, th I think I've sort of, and, and that's again, like a, kind of a minor complaint that I don't really have a lot of stock in with regards to the characters interacting with each other. Just in terms of things that I'm discontented with, I think that was a missed opportunity I pointed out a few times. So, it's good to kind of walk around our memories here, right? While we're doing this. Let me know if the music's too loud. And if it's distracting at all. But yeah, I do think that... The game was an absolute pleasure. Um, to, 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 to just to, to play. The whole thing. It just... 
unbelievably enjoyable as an experience. I do think that, of course, just due to its structure, it has some limitations with how things are, are built. I've never gone to these before. That's kind of fun. Um, it's kind of rigid in the game. is clearly built to make it, you know, to, to sort of make it possible to be 150 hours long, right? That's sort of the, the feat that's accomplished here, is that you can buy decorations. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Is that the, the price you're paying for a game that has a 150 hour continuous narrative, uh, which is, again, unreal. That's ridiculous. Um, is that some of it, you know, is built on these clear, on the scene engine, right? So this is this, this dialogue scene engines and some things sort of come off the way they are because of that. And that's fine. Um, but man, because not everything can be the same level as the end, the otherwise really strong cinematic animation sequences and the actual anime sequences, because there's just no budget for doing that many hours of animation, right? So at the end of the day, that's, that's kind of fine and how it is. But man, I had a blast. What an unbelievable game. I do think with regards to Royal, it was integrated really, really smoothly. I think Sumire's plot uh, joined the game as smoothly as it could, and they came up with, I think, fairly compelling reasons for her not to join the plot until until Royal came through. I am left feeling like I wish a lot of the Royal content could have been introduced earlier, like having a Ketchy and Sumire join sooner. Um, in Ketchy, maybe not, but Sumire at least... Would have been nice to have her in the party sooner. Probably wouldn't have broken anything um, by any means. It's because it was a little odd to only have the last the last little chunk of the game with her involved. So a little frustrating there for sure. Especially because we had the intro with her at level 40. I catch you like that in base. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah. And it's, it's sort of fine to have the end game only stuff, but I think when it's a whole character like Samira, I mean, we, we, I wanted to get her involved with the group sooner. So and that would obviously have involved more comments of rewrites and stuff like that, so... You know how it goes. In basic, I was supposed to story confident. Gotcha. Okay. But man, the confidence system is very, very strong, and obviously the, the reason why Persona has been so strong since three and so such a, a fire catching ever since then, and since five, even blowing up even more. And five, eight, four gold just made insane sales numbers on on PC. Uh, it's an incredibly, incredibly elegant system for for doing story chunks like this really rewarding and like i said i think it's only flaw is that it necessitates that every plot revolves around joker and that's sort of fine i think it just leads to a little bit of of the writing being um too much like dating sim style aggressively main character centric um and that's sort of you know fine but doesn't always lead to the most exciting character arcs when everything's so focused on on Joker. But man, I was just I was constantly floored by how much the game kept throwing at us in terms of unique content. Like I was expecting like months to go by with very little stuff happening and just going palace to palace, but there was so much narrative everywhere, all over the place. Uh, I was super impressed with the use of texting as a core theme of the game. It's something that's just like kind of a personal interest of mine to see modern communication depicted authentically and as part, like I kind of holistically as part of these character relationships. And seeing that is something that I really think is awesome to see well, to see done so well here. Because it, it's it's hard to, 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 I think part of, one of the part of the, the exciting part of Persona 5 here is that it's such a solid portrayal of the modern world. And if you're going to portray modern teenagers, you're going to portray a group chat <laughs> and you're going to portray texting and having that be a core feature of the game, I think was really smart and just a really smooth way to, to again, marry the narrative and the themes to mechanics. So that was phenomenal. And having, you know, the uh, Metaverse Navigator as a part of that was genius. Persona 3 had an, actually had a four part, six hour long movie. Wow. And Persona 4 has two animes, one below, one not. And I, I know the Persona 5 anime got kind of lukewarm reception as well. Um, but we have this, so who cares, I guess. Um, I think in terms of favorite parts of the game, probably the end game of base was my favorite part. Um, I enjoyed Royal a lot, too. Rookie's Palace is probably my favorite palace, but the end game in base was so good. Really hit that, um, the, like, kill of the first flame kind of vibe with the final area. 
in terms of aesthetics, and I love that. So, you know, it's a great sort of final conflict area, and the uh, the theming around Yaldabaoth and the the, the uh, Velvet Room reveals was just so strong. So I loved that, and A1, yeah, A1 super hit or miss in my experience. So it is what it is. Um, it, the anime scenes look look totally fine. Just sort of you know. That is what it is. I think the anime scenes are all aggressively anime, even more than the main game itself. Um, and kind of uncomfortable in that way, especially with regards to comedy involving female characters. They're just kind of like, eh, I don't like this. Um, so that sort of is what it is, but... Um, yeah, man, it was really, really, really good. The fact that I was so compelled to play so much of this should go so... Should, should tell you, just from my play patterns traditionally, that I really liked this game. Um, the fact that I was this compelled to uh, keep playing and doing more gameplay when I could have shortcutted and gone for less completion. Uh, I'm not somebody who does completion in games that often. I don't go for like 100%ing things. And I don't feel too moved to go for like, you know, all trophies or anything, but man, I wanted to see everything this game had to offer. I was really torn off not seeing all the extra confidants because I was so excited to see more of them. Um, that said, I'm, I'm, I'll probably do New Game Plus at some point. Like, the fact that I'm even thinking about doing New Game Plus means this is easily one of my favorite games ever. I don't do New Game Pluses as a rule because I like to just, you know, do new stuff. And yeah, that's not necessarily on stream, but um, I just personally want to keep playing this. So it's been, you know, so much fun. And I, yeah. The ending here was very emotional. I'm surprised. I, I will say, I do think the royal recut of this, I think I've seen part of that other scene, felt a little bit less emotional. Um, because we're so we're so hard trying to lead into the next game with the scramble or uh, Persona Five sequel, um, and that's sort of fine. But I do think it sort of cuts the rug out from underneath some of that emotion because we're so focused on the uh, the surprising um, bits with the catchy and stuff like that. So it sort of is what it is. Um, with that, but um, the sort of like that's, that's sort of again like the the nature of engaging in like a massive franchise like this because. Uh, Persona 6 is one thing, but, um, yeah. It, like, it definitely makes more sense with regards to the overall plot, with the government trying to investigate, um, the thieves. That makes sense, for sure. Like, them just sort of dropping that would be kind of odd, especially when Shido's crew is still in power. Um, but, yeah, I think emotional, emotion, like, emotional impact-wise, like, I was waiting for, like, that, like, you know, resonant, like, the gang's heading out one last time. And um, we kind of instead got like the lead into the next thing, which is, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, but yeah, man, I, the, the core cast is phenomenal. I really did like the whole core crew, the whole, all the Phantom Thieves I ended up loving. Um, some are stronger than others for sure. Some confident arcs I liked better than others for sure. Um, but man, what a great cast of characters and what a great group i mean i i you, you can tell by what i did for confidants who i wanted to see the most and uh one thing that went that worked out really well uh i had such an amazing time with the confidants and everybody here and man it was just an incredible incredible journey so um man the royals got the job done it's gonna be an easy never saw it coming out of 10 um, because I didn't see it coming. I didn't, I didn't realize how hard this was going to hit me, um, going into it that like, I was going to be so enthralled with this and man, Persona 4, we'll get you to put the characters 2 and 3. Cool. I'm excited. Um, yeah, the fact that I'm so excited to play more Persona games too, despite the, you know, obvious downgrading QL, like I'm really looking forward to it. So I think that's about what I got for takes in me right now. I could, of course, do a follow-up video or something later if we want to see more in-depth takes, but that's how I'm feeling at the moment, I think. So, of course, if you have any, uh, if you have any thoughts that you would like to me to, uh, if you have any questions or things you want me to explore in more detail, let me know. But that's generally it. Um, I think that, you know, the long story short is it's a phenomenal experience. It's not going to be for everybody. The fact that the game is this long is going to make it the sole determining factor in making it not an instant recommend to everybody. Because like, if you don't have the time for this, like, you don't have the time for this. Like, this is a lot of time to commit. Um, so by that in its nature, it means the game is always going to be relatively niche. But good God, if you like RPGs, if you like character-driven narratives, um, this is one to look at. That's for dang sure. 
and man, what an experience. So, and, we're, and stream folks, stick around after this. We're going to talk about future plans and other stuff and do some chill out after this. Um, but, um, yeah, I guess this is the end of the journey for Persona 5. Um, for now, at least, you know, so we're going to be, we got a Western confirmation for the Scramble release. So we, we'll be back with the Persona 5 crew at some point. And uh, who knows what comes after that. So... I guess that'll be it then. And again, like I said, if I, I'll, I'll reserve my right to do more takes if I want to do more takes. Um, this game's got a lot going on, so... If there's demand for takes, please let me know. If you're on YouTube and you demand more takes, let me know. I'd love to give more takes. This will be a little bit after... Uh, you'll see this on YouTube a little bit after I'm recording it in person, of course, but uh, I'm always checking the videos to see if people have any thoughts, so... Uh, I'm feeling very choked up right now um, about the ending. Um, just because it's been... This has been the longest playthrough on the stream by far. Um, and man, that's a, that's a lot to take in. So thank you all so much for being a part of this journey. Um, if you're here now, if you're here watching this later, no matter where you are, if, you, if you're seeing this, uh, that means you were a part of this and that's a, that means a lot. So thanks for coming along on the, on the ride with us and uh, hopefully we'll see you for the next ride, whatever it ends up being. And for those of you interested in Persona, of course, I'm playing through to do Persona 4 and Persona 3 at some point. Um, and then SMT stuff too. So stick around for that. But otherwise, you know, we got plenty of other stuff that's not related to Atlas Games or SMT in the future. So, exactly. Um, so in that case, folks, if you're on YouTube, this is it for you. Um, there should be um, a channel link down there and either the playlist link or another playlist link or multiple links around my head at this point to direct you to some content. And please consider coming by the stream every day, Sunday through Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash s underscore There should be a link below as well uh, to come join us live. Feel free to drop by, hang out with us. Uh, there's a Discord, there's a Twitter for updates, all that kind of good stuff. Come check us out. Hopefully I will see you all very soon. Until then, thank you again for coming along with us. Um, enjoy yourselves until next time. Peace.